Hey guys, welcome back to SK Generator Zone. In the previous video, you might have seen I model the bay with exploded animation, but in today's tutorial, you will see how to animate the two movements shown here, which are rotation and revolution. If you are new to the channel, then please subscribe to see more content like this and also share your thoughts in the comments below. So, without any further ado, let's jump right away in Blender and get started with this tutorial. So we are in the Blender interface and as you guys can see, this is the bay imported over here, which I created a few days ago. And if you guys are following along through this tutorial, uh, you can see the operations which I perform in the right corner over here. So in this section, we will uh, see how to rotate this bay along the Z axis and give a constant rotation. Uh, before that, I want you guys to please uh, make sure that the bay or the object which you are practicing this tutorial with is a single object and does not have any separate parts to it. So this will make it easier. So let's get started guys. So I'll select the bay and go to the key one and insert a rotation keyframe. It's taking time because the geometry is high right now and i will go to watch 30th frame or so and then rotate this bay along the z-axis giving it a direction which is anti-clockwise right now for me and then i will give the rotation degree of 2500 and i will insert a rotation keyframe over here i and rotation So once this is done, you can see in the timeline that our object has been animated, but it's not in linear speed. So to make this linear, you can right click in the uh, timeline and set the interpolation mode to the linear. Now this is done. Uh, we want a continuous animation, not uh, only up till 30th. So go to the graph editor, uh, expand the graph editor and press the home key so that you can see the graph easily. And then you can go to the key tab, selecting all the keyframes, you can go to the key tab and add F curve modifiers and select cycles. You can expand the F curve modifier and only active if it is checked, please uncheck that. Once you do this, you can see the continuous graph has been formed throughout the timeline and if you play the rotation will be continuous throughout the 250th frame so we'll go back to the timeline and we are done with this rotation animation you can add a plane for the ground and set uh, the location of the plane to the tip of the bay or the object and then scale it according to your and you are ready to render this out okay so now we are done with the uh, rotation animation now we will see how to get this object revolve and rotate at the same time so to do that we will add a circle bezier circle and then just go to the edit mode to see the direction so the direction right now is clockwise direction i want it to be anti-clockwise so to do that i will go to the edit mode and select all the nodes and just rotate it along the x or y axis by 180 degree so i will rotate it so now it has been rotated and you can see the direction has been reversed so we'll go back to the object mode and we will select the bay and go to the constraint tab and we will go to the follow follow path add-on uh, sorry constraint and then select the bezier circle so as you can see the object has been snapped on the circle then we'll check follow curve and animate path and if you play the object is following the curve so now it's following the curve but it's not looking as realistic as we need 
to make it feel realistic we can add tilt to the object so to add a tilt we will uh, add another object which is an empty you can add any of the empty objects it doesn't really matter i have selected sphere over here i'll select the pay again and then go to the constraint tab and again add a constraint which is tab track and then we will select the empty as the target now here we can uh, set the direction to this is head this is what i want and then when it's the direction is uh, set you can go to the influence and decrease it as you can uh, see as i decrease the influence the tilt is uh, been uh, visible and this much tilt is enough for me and if you play the tilt is constant throughout the animation now one more thing which we can do is you can uh, if i want uh, the object to revolve and then come towards the origin after some time so we can get this uh, also we can scale the vizier circle itself so i will add a scaling uh, keyframe and go to the end frame and scale the vizier circle downwards and again i will select and add a scaling keyframe over here so once you play that you can see that the object is moving towards the origin revolving and rotating at the same time uh, one more thing if you see a spinning top or spinning beyblade uh, you might see when it's approaching the origin it tries to straighten up so to do that we can uh, give keyframes to the influence itself in the damp track so we'll hover uh, to the influence keeping the keeping uh, going to the key one and then we'll add a keyframe over there pressing i again we'll go to the end frame and again watch it from a side view and then we'll go to the influence again hover to the influence and decrease the influence at some extent and then insert a keyframe over there pressing i so once the keyframe has been added you can see when you play the tilt is also been animated as you can see the tilt is decreasing as it approaches the origin now you can add a plane over here to get the crown and scale it and if you bring the plane down you can see there is a problem so uh, first we will go to the end frame with the is the lowest and then we will bring the plane downwards now if you play backwards we will go to the key one let's see uh, Okay, if you see and go to the key frame, first key frame, like this, you can see the bay is lifted upwards and it's not touching the ground anymore. So to fix this, what we can do, we can add uh, keyframes to the Bezier circle itself. So we'll select the Bezier circle, and then uh, I'll go to switch to wireframe mode to see the plane and the Bezier circle at the same time. So select the BGS circle, go to the end frame and on the 250th frame as you can see the bay is moving upwards. Uh, so we'll go back to the 250th frame and we will add a keyframe which is scaling and location. So we want the frame to be for location as well as scale and we'll go again to the first keyframe and we will select the bgs uh, circle and uh, bring it down towards the ground about this much after doing that we will add the location and scale keyframe so now if we can see as we run through uh, the timeline the bay is sticking to the ground all the time so in the 3d view can see that 
the prey is sticking to the ground all the time and it's not coming above the ground so after doing this you are ready to animate this thing or render this thing out so let's add a camera and select the camera and then go to the numpad 0 and go to the fps mode and come backwards suppose this much it's up to you you can set it uh, uh, the way you want and then i will add a diamond track and select the pegasus and uh, pegasus uh, which is the object and then if you see if i play throughout the timeline the object is always at the center so the camera is tracking the object all the time once this is done you can texture and render out the whole sequence you can also add different angles to get a cinematic view so we are done with the tutorial thank you